Well, people, it's finally official. <laughs> I mean, we knew this was going to happen since Sunday, but it's been just like delaying the inevitable for what feels like Forever. three months, but it's been three days. John Calipari officially the new head coach for Arkansas Razorbacks men's basketball. Again, like we knew this was coming, fellas, but how surreal, how weird did it feel to see Hunter Juracek tweet out the, the red smoke from Bud Walton Arena, and then you just see the official release, and there's Cal in all his glory in red. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, I updated the, you know, we had a story, was it Sunday night? Reports were that Cal was going to be the, the next head coach here, and I'm updating it after the, the, the release came out, and I just looked over at you, and I'm just like, I still can't wrap my head around it. <laughs> um, the hype videos have been great. Like, yes. It's just, I think it's just, it's really hitting me. You look at some of the graphics that the program has put out, six Final Fours. He's one of like two or three coaches that have taken multiple programs to a Final Four. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, tonight is going to be an event, like we've been saying for a few days. It's going to be insane, streamed on, like, listen, you can watch the press conference however you want. It's going to be streamed nationally sec network plus i believe and then all the local tv stations are going to have it and us and john says we're streaming too yeah um, well i don't know about that but uh we'll, we'll see the, I, the email was pretty, pretty point that? blank that tv stations <laughs> well you know i mean we're tv we're on tv so uh, no <laughs> we're we're youtubers john welcome to the digital age yeah uh, we're just youtubers but also yeah you're not going to have any trouble finding it yeah right? you're not going to have any trouble finding <laughs> it and um it's going to be it's going to be wild like it's a national national story somebody in the dixon discord the other day said it was going to be an international media event <laughs> I, that is i'm true. not putting it past that being being accurate it's, yeah, how wild is this yeah i don't even know what to think i know we get, it's like every day and every time we get closer to the reality and to the press conference to the introduction it continues just to be surreal i was thinking like all the random stuff like uh you know i saw that they put you know, welcome John Calipari at Baum Walker at Stadium. Baum, yeah. Like having on the yeah. Jumbotron or the big screen there. It's like you got that. You got the videos getting pointed out. You got Tyson sending chicken over to Matt Jones of Kentucky Sports Radio. <laughs> Couldn't happen to a better guy. Like just trolling stuff. And I mean, <laughs> it's like this is the type of thing where and we all know it's not not saying anything new, but it's like you're like this is a time to spike the ball. Like if you yeah. if there's a national championship of coaching hires and coaching carousel, you won the national championship. Like, you celebrate this as long, and you milk it for all that it's worth, and you have fun with it because this there's no bigger of a deal, and Arkansas basketball is no, being talked about and being looked at bigger than what they are right now. I, you know, people always say the term win the press conference as a knock usually on coaches where they're like, oh, he'll win the press conference, but it will he win the end? We can talk about whether or not John Calipari – will win games at Arkansas, but he is absolutely dominating the press conference tonight. I mean, I it's going to be the biggest <laughs> lopsided outcome of a press conference of all time. Uh, I'm just stunned by like watching the Kentucky folks squirm, you know, and it's like so funny seeing Kentucky, which is such a national brand, like you say, I mean, Coach Calipari has been there forever. Like they are like kind of the it team, the it program. It felt like for most of my lifetime, just seeing all their fans going through a tumultuous, like panic mode and seeing all their like media guys, you know, is pissing themselves. It's just really satisfying. It's really satisfying to see. And uh, look, you know, I know that there's still going to be times where people will dunk on Arkansas. When the first time Coach Cal loses oh, yeah. a game, people will be like, oh, yeah, you're so happy about that or whatever. Yes, because we are still in the spotlight. We are still kind of being thrust into this position. It's just, it's just cool, man. It's cool to be a part of. It's cool to see happen. And like y'all said, it's just seeing him in that red then when that person that was I, I can't remember the guy's name i wish i had it the guy that was walking by bud walton and took a picture inside the thing <laughs> yeah. uh i thought that was like seeing that was kind of jarring where i'm like yeah. oh damn like that's coach coach cal in the red and all that uh, it was kind of weird seeing eric musselman tweet out his usc stuff like no matter how much you're prepared for it and you we all knew this was coming uh, at least the last few days it's still just stunning to see it happen and like i can't wait to see I mean, we've seen Coach Cal in Bud Walton Arena plenty, but yeah. to see him there and like calling the hogs and doing all this, it's going to be very surreal. Uh, so, I mean, you, you guys summed it up well. Well, it's a it's a new world that Arkansas is entering you know, into now from a variety of different standpoints. And from the Kentucky side of it, I mean, I get it. Like, it's pretty cliche to, to say, oh, the, the Sam Pittman era, the Eric Musselman era. 
the John Calipari deal at Kentucky was an era. I mean, 15 years, that's uh that's a long time, man. Yeah. And for that to end is uh I'm sure it is a little bit unsettling, even for those who are like, yeah, you know, like it's probably about time that this happens. Uh, it's it's going to hit different. It's going to feel different. It's going to be, I'm sure, surreal for John Calipari. Like, I'm anxious to hear from him. I'm sure he'll have a, a zinger of an answer, but just like kind of the rush of emotions of leaving something like Kentucky. You've been there for so long, but then also the excitement of a new challenge, you know, in, at a program like Arkansas. I mean, it, it's really going to be uh, just fascinating. But yeah, I mean, doors open to Bud at five. And uh, press conference starts at, or the the intro there on the floor is at at six o'clock, and then uh, we'll be down in that media room for the Q and A yeah. at six thirty. It's going to be well. I was crazy. I completely I was, whiffed on it being in the media room. I didn't think there was any way. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I'm going to be I'm, packed like sardines in there. Yeah, it's going to be great. Well, they're doing the main thing wait. in the in Bud Walton Arena, right? Right, right. Yeah, but on the, the yeah. floor, but the, the media press conference after will be in the media yeah. room. Well, going yeah, but, back to, but it's not going to be like a, they're not going to have like fans in that joint, right? No, it's just going no, to no, no. be media. No, I was just saying. Well, you think it's going to be just, the four of us and Bob? Is that no, but I meant like I meant like it's not going to be like post. They're not doing the whole ceremony in the media room, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I think I laid that out. Yeah. Just now. No, I thought you did too, but I thought whenever he said that, I was kind of panicking. I was like, wait a minute. But you know, going back to your point of like him leaving it's like you know in college basketball you've always had especially the old guard because i still think cal is part of the old guard he's mm-hmm. one of the last like him and like yeah. tom Izzo are part of the old guard like pretty much the only remaining coach maybe bill self in there but you know tom Izzo is not taking another job after michigan state bill self's not taking another job after yeah. kansas coach k did not take another job after duke roy williams didn't take another job after north carolina like this is something to where it was just an assumption because that's how it works that Cal is just going to be in Kentucky until he's done coaching, and then he retires. And so that is really unprecedented of seeing, even if it wasn't Arkansas, just anywhere he would go. It's unprecedented to think that he's not finishing his coaching career at Kentucky because all these guys, they just stuck around until they finally were like, all right, I'm done. It's like, no, he's like, I'm not done coaching, but I am done being in Lexington, and I'm going to go to Arkansas. It's unprecedented. Well, as Matt Jones knows, you got to wait. We got to wait for all the facts to yeah, come out. Say, Who knows? Wait. We, you know, they, I don't want to speak too soon. Did they you know, contact Kentucky? Informed Kentucky, we still don't know yet. We'll see. You know, we're waiting for it all to come out. We'll ask so him dumb. tonight in person. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems like it's time to to do the tour. We've got and contract details. Yeah, we let's do talk have about that. We got all that stuff. Um, pretty pretty interesting. I mean, we saw the uh, the initial release that came out. So just like the the basic numbers. Um, five-year deal, as as most people thought. Uh, starting salary at seven million per year that goes through the end of the 2029 season. Uh, two automatic rollover years um, for NCAA tournament appearances that he so he could extend that contract all the way through 2031. Uh, million dollar signing bonus, nice. Uh, Five hundred thousand a year retention bonus every year for that contract. Um, a lot of bonuses for the NCAA tournament, and it's kind of like an escalating scale, uh, which is pretty interesting. So I, I'll read those to you real quick. 50000 if you make the tournament. That's expected. So, yeah. you know. Um, Might as well be guaranteed You get a money. box of cookies for it. Yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it goes up from there. hundred k for the round of 32, uh, quarter mil for the Sweet 16, 350000 uh, for a Final Four, 500000 for winning a, a national championship at Arkansas. So if he wins a national championship, one point two five mil. Yes, that's right. Is yeah, that worth it? Exactly. I love, uh, one of those. I love right. the term retention bonus. I think we need to start working those into our natty state contracts. Retention bonus. If I'm not fired <laughs> yeah. this time next year, I need to get you another get bonus. more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, no, that I mean that's contract. I don't know. Compare it's not like I know a lot of contracts in college basketball, but I mean it seems like pretty standard, pretty straightforward, and. Pretty, I will say it didn't blow me away. Like in a, in terms of obviously we knew the salary, we knew some of these numbers or at least ballpark of what they might be. But uh, you know the buyout, what is it like seventy five percent of the remaining stuff on the salary? Which you know we the the math would get a little shaky once you add in the like rollover well, years and stuff like that. It depends on how you look at it. like if if you so the the buyout if if he the one that people really want to know about is like can he get poached from which, somebody else. Uh, and if if that's the case, like his buyout is six million, like that's that's what another school essentially would have to pay to poach John Calipari away from Arkansas. Um, if if Arkansas fires him without cause, that's where the yeah. rest of that comes into play. What you what you were talking about, yeah. yeah. 
um, an amount equal. If Arkansas fires John Calipari, it's for the hell of it, yeah. right? Without cause. Um, he's owed 75%, yes, of, of his remaining annual salary and other compensation um, from that date through the end of which, which, like term. you know, depending on where you're at in this contract and with the rollover years and with whatever, like could be a pretty large number. But like you think of Coach Cow, like it was 37 million at Kentucky. It's like maybe it ends up, you know, depending on if like they fired him right now. Yeah, it'd obviously be that. But it's like it's it's not as crazy of like I really thought I was going to look at it and it would be like lifetime or like mm-hmm. John Calipari, like Arkansas would have to give him one percent of uh you know something for him to get fired. But it seems like yeah, it seemed a little bit more normal. Uh, obviously, it's still Coach Calipari. There's a lot. The numbers are big, but in terms of just the structure of it, you know, it wasn't as like crazy as I as I expected. I guess sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars a year car allowance. That's a big one. I wonder what he's gonna drive. That's a great question. Probably a, uh, like, I don't, I don't probably think a Corolla. Yeah, yeah. He's probably Toyota you know, Corolla. No, no, something really good for the environment. He either um, strikes me as a as a Lexus or an or an SUV guy. Yeah, he's I, probably I, I could see guy. him being like the crossover SUV though, like yeah. some of those like smaller <laughs> ones. Maybe the like an infinity or something. I love Kent Beatty here. Yeah, says none of us are paying. So, so what does money matter? Uh, in in when it comes to college basketball head coaches and whether or not they stay and leave at schools, money matters a, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it so it is very well, very yeah. much matters in this context. I yeah. mean, I couldn't even fire off the initial tweet about his salary and stuff before people were like, "What about his buyout? What about nil? Nah. What about this? What about that?" <laughs> Who cares? Uh, so like, yeah, people are people yeah. are definitely interested in it. Um, if he dies on the job, then the rest of his earned and, and owed compensation goes to his estate okay which is nice that's nice uh, they put that in every contract but it's just surreal reading through it and that's why like one of the things we were talking about is like wow why is this taking longer than expected i'm this thing's 27 pages long guys that's a lot yeah <laughs> that, that's a that's a whole lot man um but yeah palmer and mcgruff will be taken care of yeah yeah exactly if something were to happen to john the dog goes uh, not a standard non-compete in the SEC, so like he's, that, he's that agreed is a big to one. not go to Mississippi State or whatever. Yeah. Oh, good. Where, where good. else would he go got, besides <laughs> Kentucky or Arkansas? Like, yeah, what? I don't know what that would look like, but yeah. <laughs> I thought about that. I was I was really like kind of intrigued by that at first, and then I really started thinking about it. I'm like, realistically, there's no chance he would go to any SEC school because I mean, right? The two that you would go to, he's at yeah. or has been to. Yeah. As far as the NIL, like, there's nothing about that in this <clears throat> in this contract, obviously, no. but we know there's a a very large commitment there. And then uh, I, I know on three was already reporting that as soon as the press conference is over tonight, that he's meeting with the Tysons, the Waltons and everybody else about, uh, about exactly that. So um, dinner at Vesuvio's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I think it's safe to say that Arkansas is not going to have an NIL problem uh, moving forward here. And I, I think that'll be reflective in the type of guys that they're going to get like right away. I wanted to go over a couple of things. Uh, you know, there was a special called meeting of the board of trustees this morning. I think it was, that was at nine o'clock. I think like the official announcement came like right before that began. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, and so I was not to say I was caught off guard, but I was waiting on that meeting to start and then the bomb dropped. Um, but a couple of things, like it, it felt like it was pretty standard. Um, Hunter Yurchek gave his spiel. It's, it, he almost came across like he was still trying to sell these people on on John Calipari. Um, went over his win loss record, all the <laughs> Final Fours, and the title he won. That kind of thing. It was interesting. Um, he called him John Vincent Calipari. He dropped his government name. Um, but one of the trustees, Ted Dickey, said something that um, was interesting. He said he was on the search committee um, and added that through his conversations with coaches across the country. They believe Arkansas is a top 10 job. But the best thing that I thought he said was that he was really honored to be trusted to be on that search committee. Um, And he said it was a weekend that he will remember for the rest of his life. Like he will (laughs) never, never forget it. I think it's just kind of cool to get that that kind of an insight from from somebody who was like boots on the ground, very in the middle of of the fire there. Um, And then Charles Robinson, the chancellor, um, spoke briefly and he said that um, as he was walking campus the last few days, there was just like a, a buzz in the air, like an excitement in the air. So he's, uh, those guys are, are really glad that this is wrapped up and moving into a new era. You mentioned cool. the, uh, like them getting kind of confirmation that Arkansas is an elite job and all that. If hiring Coach Calipari is not that confirmation that Arkansas is oh, still sure. kind of a highly regarded program and a job that a lot of people want, I mean, we were we were the other day when we were at lunch. We read a list that had Arkansas at number six 
in the country in terms of best jobs in the country. Whether you agree with it or not, it just tells you of just how some people view Arkansas. And so I think that's kind of, you know, we'll, we'll see how this tenure plays out in terms of wins, losses, tournament success, and all that. But I think, at least for right now, it just feels like Coach Calipari coming to Arkansas is just proof of where Arkansas stands as a program and more like etches them in stone among those college basketball elites because there's a lot of programs that have nice little runs. Like Arkansas accomplished a lot under Eric Musselman, but there's a lot of programs who have nice little stretches, runs, and I mean, that kind of always point to their past success forever. Arkansas being able to capitalize on that success and land someone like Calipari and just have them be, they're continuing. I mean, it's Wednesday now. Every day this week, Arkansas has been the biggest sports story in the world. And it's probably going to be that way tomorrow. Like, it's just kind of a, a huge avalanche. And it seems like it's just building. And I don't know. I mean, like, obviously, Coach Cal could just suck and Arkansas could never win. But it's hard to imagine Arkansas going the other direction now as a program. It feels like this is kind of a uh, them joining the elites. And now it seems like they're going to uh, they're gonna stay there in that realm, which is you know exciting for people of this state and people of this, uh, you know, this university. To double back to the the NIL stuff real quick, I'm just texting back and forth with a with a buddy who's a very good source on this type of stuff. Um, just talking about the Waltons, like there's been a lot of, I, I think people outside of Northwest Arkansas just automatically think, oh, Northwest Arkansas, Walmart, yeah, they're they're just forking over boatloads of cash, and that really hasn't been the case uh, nearly as much as you would think. Uh, but the understanding that I have here is that getting a guy like Cal is something that they had expressed that they would get heavily involved in. And uh, I would I would expect that to, to happen now. And that's obviously a, a game-changing event uh, to have that added into the mix. So, yeah, Arkansas is going to be in, uh, in good hands. Serious question. Do you think rich folks around the state, like when they see other rich folks make big, expensive purchases – like for example, hiring a celebrity to come coach the University of Arkansas. Like, do you think like like do you think the WalMarts and the Hunts they're like kind of looking at this and like, damn, everybody's talking about Tyson Chicken. Like, man, we we needed you know like they kind of need to do something. Like, do you think it pisses other rich folks off when other rich folks are making big news and all these cool? The more things? money you make, the more ego you have. I mean, it's 100%. just natural. So like, yeah, I would. If I'm the U of A, know. I'm like. Y'all gonna take that Walmart? Hey, uh, <laughs> take that sitting down, Mister Hunt. You gonna take that? You know, like uh, what, what are you gonna do? Yeah. But uh, I see a lot of people being like, "Oh, they should throw all this money at football." Why? Why would they do that? The well, basketball program, at least it's at least you know it's going towards something cool. Yeah, like well, relax. And also, we got like seven programs to get to before we get to football. Jeez. And also, if you're saying if it's like the seven million dollars or whatever they're gonna be having for basketball, seven million dollars in basketball goes a lot further yeah. than seven million dollars in football. Yeah, that'll yeah. get you. Like, that'll get you guys Jaquin and Jackson versus, in football. Uh, Eighty-five. Yeah, whatever, exactly. So. Like it'll get you a few good players, but mm-hmm. you know the the Waltons have been like I guess, I guess the frustrating thing for people is like they've seen you know like when Missouri I guess got that huge bump in their nil collective or whatever and it was never confirmed at least i don't know i don't know if it was confirmed but the idea was is that a lot of it came from walton's because of the walton kids going to the university of missouri and i think that frustrated a a lot of people but that's the type of thing that you were hopeful for if you were a razorback fan is that getting these big companies to get involved and the tysons are big involved like this is this is very apparent we know the hunts were involved with with Musk and all them but it's more also about the just the public perception of everyone hearing about that's what they're giving. That's what, you know, oh, the Tysons are dropping this. Oh, the Waltons are getting involved. Because then people start seeing like, oh, shoot, man, that's a place I want to go. Because mm-hmm. if they're getting that type of money. So it's just, it's recruiting almost in the way of, even if it's even if it wasn't 100% true, even if you didn't have that money, it's like, you just throw it out there and be like, oh, man, well, I'm interested in them now because I hear that they're putting up $8 million for your NIL. It's big for that. Right. And so, yeah, I love the love the comment here. Thank you. We were having some trouble with math before we started <laughs> yeah. this. So, yeah, I mean, 13 scholarship guys, if you just split it right down the middle, if it, if that NIL was 7 mil, and, and we'll see what it actually is. But, it's, I mean, it's over 500K a player. That'll get you a, that'll get you a squad. And we know how they'll disperse it. So, right. uh, you know. <laughs> Lawson Blake's like like coming in to get his check. <laughs> like a month and a half ago, Curtis, John asked you on his show, was like, what do you think it takes to, you know, wise to build a national championship team? And you said three to five. Yeah. 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 How seven do? <laughs> oh, exactly. my gosh, man. And, you know, I, I remember the uh, the Goodman report at the end of the season where he was saying that there were six programs in the Big East that gave out two million or more in NIL this past season. And only three of them made the NCAA tournament. Yeah. And so, you know, you're, you're going to be operating in new territory <laughs> here for sure. It's going to be crazy to see. Um, and, you know, like I wonder how much of that's going to have to go towards getting this highly 
touted freshman class to flip yeah. or, as, you know, as many of them as possible. And then what do you have to work with after that in the portal? Because, I, I mean, these are dudes, you know, at least a, a couple of them there who are potential lottery picks and stuff, you know, for next year's draft. Um, that ain't going to come cheap. So that'll make a dent, but you're still going to have plenty to work with for uh, for building out the roster. It's going to be – this is going to be – I tweeted out last night, but, like, I just don't – I don't know that people really have a, a true grasp yet for what this means and, like, yeah. what this is going to look like. This It's it's theater, man. Like, whatever cliche you want to throw out there, get your popcorn ready, whatever. But like, this <laughs> roster building, it's going to be – nuts to watch i can't wait like I'm, I'm excited man well and i think that what's fascinating with this is obviously nil is a little bit different situation a lot of the success coach cal had back in the day was not you know was pre-nil so you could make an argument like oh is he ready to do this transfer thing is he ready to do whatever but like think about a coach who has been operating like a ceo for the better part of like 20 years and kind of running his program that way I think this fresh start with the new budget, the new program, the new look and everything, like I think this is a good chance for Cal to kind of reestablish himself as kind of like the mob boss figure in college basketball and kind of yeah. show that he can adapt. Because I think, obviously, he's known he's had to adapt to this new era in college basketball the last four years. But when you move to a new program and you have a chance to kind of set everything clear, it's like a new blank slate and you just get to paint this canvas however you want. Uh, I think it gives a guy like Cal who is – super creative and has really been at the forefront of a lot of things that have that are the college basketball world we live in today he's kind of been doing this forever i think he's you know you couldn't find a guy better equipped to walk into a situation like he's about to walk into and uh kind of what you meant about the spectacle and the theater of it we're so in deep with the arkansas stuff so we're reacting to everything that happens at arkansas watching it and freaking out and doing these live streams and we don't realize the spectrum and the scale of how big this is and i think a lot of fans don't either where like yeah, you may. This may just be another day at the office for you because Arkansas finally hired a coach. But there's a lot of people around the country who are now watching this the same way that you guys are, and it's just so much bigger than one team, one player, one program, or even like one season. Uh, like Arkansas's Elite Eight run with Eric Musselman generated a ton of buzz and changed the program. You can make an argument simply hiring Coach Calipari generated more buzz than three Elite Eight or Sweet Sixteen runs did. Honestly, yeah, that's how crazy it is, and so. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of questions to answer, a lot of work to do, but uh man, it's just it's hard not to be really just excited about just how this is playing out and how big of a deal this is. From a from like a sheer recruiting standpoint, uh well, just overall, like the thing that stands out to me the most about just my memories of Calipari. I mean, we could talk about him getting tossed at, at Arkansas, like all those different things, but I just remember being at one of those Nike EYBL like grassroots basketball weekends i was in kansas city and uh you know like there's a lot of a lot of buzz in there when like certain players are on the floor or whatever and you know how it is like you're looking around you're like oh we got you know so-and-so and and -and so-and-so coach is front and center to to check on whatever player but i remember later in the day when coach cal walked into that gym and there's i mean there's eight courts with different games going on like tom izzo's there and you know, like Muss is there, like all these guys are there. Coach Cal walks in that building, and the entire aura in that place just flips on its yeah, head. Yeah, he's got an aura about it. And all doubt. eyes are right there. Where yeah. is he going? Who is he watching? Now he's going to be doing it with a with an Arkansas quarter zip on, and that's uh, it's just the the impact from a from just a recruiting standpoint. It's uh, I'm telling, it's just it's going to hit different, fellas. I mean, it's it's going to be crazy. What uh. Those kids that he's watching, how do they feel when he walks in? Like, that's – bro, your <laughs> knees get weak. Like, I remember one time I was playing AAU ball, and I had my girlfriend come watch a practice one time, and I couldn't dribble. <laughs> I couldn't dribble right for, like, five minutes. Yeah. And John Calipari walks in there and starts watching you play, dude. Like, you've got to legitimately almost put blinders on and mm-hmm. just kind of knock it out. But well, I'm, I'm excited to – hopefully there's some events um, that we'll be going to, you know, in the in the next little while and – um, hopefully start getting a really good idea of who these cats are going after. Yeah. That's going to be going to be really exciting. Well, I remember when uh, I watched, I guess, was it like the, I forgot what it was called, but they had the thing up in Northwest Arkansas years ago when Malik Monk was at Bentonville. And it was Malik Monk's team playing against, uh, I believe it was Jason Tatum's team. Oh, uh, Shamanad. Uh, yeah, Shamanad. It was like that. They went against each other, and then there was another one where, I guess it was Jimmy Witt's team. 
when he was up in Missouri, went against like the Connor Vanover's team, yeah. like Arkansas. Lonzo Ball was that that thing too, I think. No, that was the uh, Bass Pro <laughs> thing. Was this was the okay. thing in Bentonville, but yeah, but, well, I, but the reason I brought that up is because what you were saying is I remember a lot of different coaches came to that. Of course, Mike Anderson was there, Arkansas coaches, and some few others. But when but Cal Perry came in, and when he came in, he had courtside seat, dead center, sat down, and, and by like he was only, it wasn't he was late. But like fashionably late, like all the other coaches already got there. There was empty seats, and then he walks in. Everything he does, he's got an entrance. Yeah, Yeah, he's got an entrance. (laughs) Yeah, and as soon as he walked in, I remember everyone just the their phones were out, and it was just madness. And so, yeah, I mean, I think Andrew, you said it earlier. It's like when you hire a celebrity, that's what he is. He is truly a celebrity. He's gonna have paparazzi. He's gonna have people like every time you see him, it's just suddenly everyone the the mood changes, the vibe changes in the room. And I don't think you can really put a price on that type of impact, uh, especially in the college basketball landscape, because what what's cool? Cool is power. Power is aura. Aura is something that you can relate to and you want to be a part of. And so even if there was like, there's going to be so many kids that probably don't even know where Arkansas is at on a map, but because Calipari's here, Suddenly they're like, oh well, I mean, I'm I'm gonna go to Arkansas. I, I don't know anything cool, about it. Cool I think if you work power, power is aura. John, just, that's a that was a bar. <laughs> it was dude. a bar. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I had we'll my moments. That. Yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say, if you were gonna put a price tag on it, it would look about like seven mil a year, <laughs> with like a little seven mil. Yeah, bottom. somewhere yeah. in that ballpark, probably. And it's just, I for everybody who's able to to come out to Bud Walton Arena this evening to watch this, um, consider this while you're thinking about like. I don't want to take anything at all away from Eric Musselman because he was exactly what this program needed. And I know yeah. it ended on a sour note and, and a, a decent amount of that is on him. Um, but the way he kind of reinvigorated the fan base and he was a master of like marketing and promoting and branding the program and, and getting that excitement going. Um, he was great at all that stuff. It just happens with cat like that's when he walks into the building that's just a thing. Like he doesn't. He's not even gonna have to try. Yeah. To get that kind of reaction and to generate that type of yeah. Buzz. Literally, all he's got to do is walk into a room. Yes. Yep. Like it'll be. I hate this term, but like it. It'll be. It'll be palpable <laughs> when, he, when he walks in <laughs> a there. Palpable buzz uh, tonight. Like you're just gonna feel it. It's gonna hit different. And uh, yeah. Here we go. Also, I've seen some, seen some people in the comments saying that um, Arkansas wouldn't have gotten this opportunity without Eric Musselman. 1,000% correct. No doubt about yeah. it. 1,000% yeah. yep. the way that we need to remember this playing out. Yep. And I'm not saying that, like, you know, if Arkansas wins four national championships in the next decade or something, that we're going to look back on the Sweet 16s and the Elite 8s and be like, that was really the thing. But it is, a, it is a very important part of the story that, you know, this program was at a very different spot in 2017 or 18 or whatever it was. It's in a very different spot now, and who knows what it'll look like in five years, but it's no all doubt. part of the story. Uh, but I do just think of, like, Must doing those skits and, like, the weird, like, putting on the football uniform and stuff like that, which is, like, we all love that stuff, and it was great, but it's, like, Coach Cal ain't doing that. Yeah, that boy, that boy Cal's going to be out that... there with a Ferrari with, with him and Ronnie Brewer and Drake are going to be in the Ferrari, and it's going to be, like, cool. <laughs> it's not going to be, like, oh, hey, please notice us. It's going to be, like, you just walk into the room and, like, he's the guy. Like, you, mm-hmm. like, like I said... Uh, it's just a very different vibe that, man, I, I can't wait to soak in tonight. I'm, I'm going to be. Well, yeah, it's, gonna it's like because to your point, too, when that time when Musk came in, yeah, it's like every Razorback fan knew what the Razorback basketball program was capable of, but they had just been dormant in that since 96. I mean, every I, that's not my favorite because it sucks. But since 96 up until the Musk era, every SEC team had made a sweet 16. Except for Arkansas, uh, I guess in, not Georgia. I think Georgia was the other one. But either way, every other SEC team made a Sweet 16 since Arkansas had. And I think that there was just this mindset about Arkansas. I was like, oh, well, you know, their they're past is it's different. They're not as – and must just proved to everybody what Arkansas fans already knew, is that you can win and win big at this place. And because of that, I think it opened up a lot of eyes to people of saying, okay – you know, Musk was a great coach. Like, I think everybody gives yeah. him credit for that. But he did it at Arkansas. He left Nevada. He went to Arkansas, and he proved it at Arkansas pretty consistently that you can do that. And so when that opens up everybody's eyes, suddenly it's like, well, if he if, if Musk can do that at Arkansas, what can Calipari do at Arkansas? Because right. they have the resources, apparently. They got to support. They got a, an arena that's going to have 20,000 people every single game for that. Uh, I mean, it's. I think it was because of Musk. It just built it back up to re. It, it, he basically that must lit the fire, and Cal Perry has now an opportunity to make it into an engulfing of flames of uh, success. I mean, that's 
pretty much what it needs to be looked at like. I've been uh, scrolling back in the chat to see if we're getting some more details here. Important one from our from our friend Ingles on Twitter. He used to drive a Mercedes. That's, we were wondering I, about the car. I, okay, like hundred percent, it was black. One hundred percent, it had to be a black. Mercedes. I believe that too. Somebody yeah. said they think he drives. Might maybe he drives an Escalade now. So yeah, we were black SUV. Yeah, yeah, checks out. I think it's going to be a Corolla, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I mean, you, it, I just that's the type. Those are the types of weird things that like I normally wouldn't care about, but now I'm like interested in. It's again, it's oh, like the paparazzi God, thing. It's like I wonder what car he's. I wonder what house he's going to live in. You know, how big is his pool going to be? You know, is he going to invite us out there? Like, is he, you know, going to be we? neighbors of DBH? These are the kind of things yeah, we're all yeah. wondering. Are they going to, you know, drink coffee together? You know, like just all these things that I shouldn't care about, but I'm just become someone's like, man, draft I watch know. party yeah. at his house or he's going to be, I mean, he's always at the draft, yeah, right? He'll be, yeah, he'll be, yeah, he's, yeah, so he's going to be there. He'll fly us all out. That's what will happen. Yeah, yeah, he'll fly us all out. He'll be there watching six guys, uh, former uh, Razorbacks of his, you get drafted, you know, just. Shaking hands. Well, we were, we were also talking yesterday about like him being out in the community aspect because obviously that's another thing. Musselman and his wife Danielle were very big on is like they were out everywhere. You would see them. Curtis was drinking drinks with them at Taco and Tamale. Like you just see him out in the community a lot. I can't <laughs> wait for that mango aspect. Margaritas of it. on deck. Huh? I was <laughs> there last night, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just can't wait to see like when we start getting that first influx of like, hey, here's Cal. He's he's eating his burger he's here. He's old. Here he is. You know, like we're just gonna see him at all these establishments and out on the town. Now, guys, don't be bothering and going crazy, but, but it's like that's going to be really cool. I mean, we see him at Herman's. P- think about how many, how big of a deal people made it when an opposing coach went to Herman's. We used to talk about that every year. It was like a thing. Uh, now it's like just that's going to be Arkansas's head coach. It's just going to feel very different. Uh, and I can't wait to see because you know pal, Cal is going to like – PayPal Cal is almost what I said. Uh, he's going to really <laughs> play it up and want to like make those rounds and go to all the places he needs to go to. He'll be at Wright's Barbecue yeah. tomorrow. Like it's yeah. it's just going to be a thing, and I'm I'm excited to watch well, it play out. Well, that's and that's honestly one of the things that I don't. I'm not expecting this, but at the press conference today, something I'm going to be watching is tone and body language, because you know press conferences not to say like this is what's going to dictate his success, but is it going to be a truly re-energized Cal? Like is he going to come in there smiling and point you know pointing fingers? Hey, I know you. You know, getting the the finger guns out and. Like, you know, owning the room and just being like so relieved to get out of Lexington and so happy to be here. Or is it going to be free, you know, business as usual, which it's not a bad way one way or the other. But I'm just going to be curious for him. We haven't seen him very happy in a while. Like He right. has not been happy. He's been as we know, it's been he's been miserable at Kentucky and he's been miserable in Lexington. So I'm going to wonder, is he coming in with that true rejuvenation everyone wants to see? Or is it going to be maybe more of like, oh, okay, I'm hey still guys, like whatever. I we don't got know. a 12-year-old in the chat. He says, everyone acts like he's Wooden Smith and Coach KL rolled into one. One national title, people. The hype train is at full speed. This is – we're not talking about – this is so much bigger than just wins, losses, and like what you can do with the program, which, by the way, he's had plenty of success. So it's like, I mean, if you want to – you know, the, maybe there's 10 coaches in the history of college of basketball who have had more success. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, you, maybe. Uh, I doubt it, but uh, it's really just more about we're not the only people hyping this up. Yeah, everyone in the freaking country, like turn on the TV right now, <laughs> go to ESPN. I guarantee you, they're talking about Arkansas. Go anywhere, they're talking about Coach Cal in Arkansas. That's what we're excited well, about. Yeah, that's Cal- what we're John that's what is a part of this is his own brand. Yeah, right. Um, and he's a Naismith Morrow Hall of Fame coach. And he's not even <laughs> he's tired not bad. Also, he's yeah. a pretty he's, damn good he's top, coach. He's like. top ten all time in wins. Like I, I, I like nobody's going to argue that the last few years here haven't yeah. gone the way you would. Expect him to. And it hasn't met expectations at Kentucky. Um, but I mean, six Final Fours and national. Ch- like, right. it's. Well, and also, that's part of why he's here. done better? No. With this hire? No. At this state? Like, I don't. They're yeah. about to hire freaking Chris Jans and, 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 you know, which Chris Jans is a good coach, but it's like, that was going to be like their fourth option, and we were all going to have to, like, kind of talk ourselves into it. You don't have to talk yourself into this. No. This one is just kind of. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, like, thinking of. Just other guys out there right now. Um, yeah, like, well, like Chris Beard, that would have been great, but that's not. A, there's no guarantees. I mean, this this is. A, I just think it's a great hire, man. Dude, Izzo yeah. himself are like the only coaches right now that could be in the conversation close to the tier that Cal is on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. this is not like. Although I guess Hurley we're is not pretty much like, there now. Yeah, he's not really <laughs> he's put got himself there. there for sure. <laughs> um, but we're like, we think the wins are going to come. Mm-hmm. Like, but we're not saying, oh, it's championship or bust next year. Like we said on the pot of the palace the other day, like I think reasonable year one expectation, given the resources that you have, is probably second weekend. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Continue, absolutely. Like continue 
what Eric did a couple of years ago, and then you just take off and you're your element. Like it's the Cal era now. Like you're putting muss in the back in the background now, but you're building off of that. Um, but we're not talking about wins and losses right now, and right. I don't even know that we're hyping them up. We're talking about what a freaking power move. Yeah, it's was. A, yeah, and it, we'll get it, there. What it also, means but, for yeah. the the program, mm-hmm. like right. that can't be understated. But yeah, like like nobody's. And we've spent plenty of time talking about how he there's things he has to do in terms of adapting to roster building in the transfer portal era, right. and he needs to have a good staff around him uh, that, yeah. he's, that he's willing to listen to. Like, yeah, I mean, like none of those things have changed. Also, if we're talking wins higher. and losses, yeah. what was Arkansas's SEC record the last two years uh, combined? Was it like 15 Losing. and something? Like, yeah, it was, it was definitely under Losing. 500. Yeah, not who great. The, who right. the hell are y'all yeah. to be talking about like, psh- Coach Cal, psh. yeah, we, we went we went seven and eleven this year. We need a better coach. Arkansas went fourteen and twenty two in the league the last two years. Yeah, who the hell are you to complain about John Calipari yeah. as the head coach, yeah. bro? What are y'all talking about? I, I don't understand that at all, and I think it's ridiculous. And people are bringing up, like, okay, again, he's only won one championship. Okay, well, you know, Nolan Richardson only won one national championship. You know, Arkansas like, has like, zero of my lifetime, so yeah, it's like, yeah, I, if, he, if I, he wins just one national title at Arkansas, I will be able to sleep at night. But I mean, how many coaches even like? just in the past 50 years have won multinational championships. I mean, you're talking about, I know Hurley just did it, but you're talking about him. You're talking about Bobby Knight. You're talking about Billy Donovan, Bill Self, uh, Coach K, Roy Williams. Like that's, that's six right there off the top. It's just not a very common thing. It's just not a common thing at all. Our boy Hazelwood just brought it up. You, y'all remember when he tried to fight John Cheney at the press conference? No, John went, Cheney tried to fight him. I was like, really? That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. John, John Cheney, Cheney said he'd kill him? Is that yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> he literally said, I will, I'm will. i going to. No, I think he said, I'm going to beat Joy. Like, it's a, it was, yeah. it's one of the best moments in the history of sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, that was such a long time ago. Look how much he's changed since then. <laughs> By the yeah. way, you know, since I know we have some Kentucky fans in the chat, all I'm going to say to y'all is y'all better hire Scott Drew, because if not, Y'all ain't gonna y'all, y'all do not want to meet us on the Twitter streets on the the stream chat or anything. You hire Scott Drew, all right, cool. You know you, you you're gonna do, <laughs> you're gonna do pretty well. If you end up if you end up uh, scraping down the bottom of the barrel, y- yeah, y'all be y'all better y'all better just make sure it works out for y'all before y'all start doing a victory lap on Cal's exit. I would say Cheney did threaten to kill him. I think yeah, yeah okay. he definitely yeah, said I something crazy. That was he case. threatened to Good. kill him at a post game news conference <laughs> while Calipari was speaking at the podium. Cheney entered the the press conference mid speech, called him an Italian sob, and accused him of manipulating the referees. <laughs> threatened to kill him. It's quite the accusatory thing to do, uh, but yeah, that wild. was that was another epic moment. But <laughs> I, I remember people were like, "Oh man, Cheney would have beat him up." I'm like, "Man, Cal would have had somebody, a group of people, a group of individuals go and uh, and take care of those types of things too." But uh, but yeah, but like the expectation, I think when you guys brought it up, it's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, dude, if you if you, if you told Razorback fans that right now, without even this roster being put together, right now, Cal is going to get you to the Elite Eight next year, but he's going to lose in the Elite Eight. Who's not signing up for yeah, that right now? Everybody. Or even the Sweet that, Also, like, dude, yeah. if if round of 32, Arkansas missed the NCAA tournament this year. They snuck in that sucker last year and ended up going on a nice little run. But it's like it's not like. You know, it, it's not like it would be a truly disaster if Arkansas were to be a six seed and lose in the first round this year. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what happened at Kentucky this year where they lost in the first round after a really good regular season? Arkansas fans shouldn't be complaining about that. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I'm not, I'm not seeing the, uh, the dire situation here. I mean, here. like, given the circumstances of being three weeks into portal season, everything already, and you're taking over this job with no, like, no roster. Like, there is yeah. no Arkansas basketball team. Um, there are a finite number of humans on this planet that could even build a, a team talented enough and deep enough for us to even be talking about an NCAA tournament next year. Yeah, Cal's on that list. So yeah. it's great hire. It's so funny to me, too, <laughs> thinking about press conferences when coaches get hired and sometimes – like the current roster will show up at that press conference, you know, and be like, stand no, stand up, you know, and then this is our current players, this is our squad. There's not gonna be any play, like there's not gonna be any players that are there. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if there was some epic trolling, like if Caleb Battle showed up there at the press conference, that'd yeah. be some, that'd be some epic trolling. That'd be good. Like something like that. Or Trevin Brazil, you know, something something like that. Just get to get people talking. But uh I, I wonder if any I'm not saying they would be, but like maybe what if there's some former players that come in there, like former players of Cal. Come into that press conference today. You know what? What if we see Boogie Cousins? I don't know what he's doing. Now, what if we maybe. see Devin Booker? Yeah, he's not doing anything. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's fresh he's, off getting his tail beat last night by the Clippers. <laughs> Boy, that was ugly. Yeah, you know, you've seen John Wall, seeing Marcus Camby walk in there, something like that. Oh, Derek God. Rose. I don't know. 
But that's what's going to be fun is like people watching of like who's the who's who around here for this press conference. I don't know. Maybe nobody. Y'all think Ronnie Brewer will be there? I think so. And mm-hmm. Riley Hall. Yeah. I think he'll be there. Hmm. So I don't know. Ronnie Brewer has been active on Twitter. Woo pig suing it up. He has been. Why wouldn't he? I would yeah. be too. Yeah. Because he, I guess, no, he wasn't at Arkansas when they played Kentucky. Or Cal wasn't at Kentucky when Brewer was at Arkansas. No. As a player. So, right. yeah, yeah, he was like earlier, about three or four years before. Yeah. So, man, it's going to be fun. Yes, it is. We're going to the airport? Yeah, fairly soon. I huh? guess. I, I mean, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. But I could I could get the flight tracking going, seeing when it's ever got <laughs> what if uh, What if weather delayed the <laughs> delayed the oh arrival. my gosh don't say that <laughs> i mean it is never it's, easy here it's a little murky it's outside easy. i'm just saying you know <laughs> yeah yeah well, let's, let's hope that's not the case uh but we'll say for tonight after the press conference since they're not they're shutting her down yeah Bud they Walton. made that clear in the email yeah they're yeah. cutting it out so what we'll do is it'll just be or uh, it'll be like a John Neighbor show special edition later. There we go. After dark. whatever that means, yeah. 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 Where basically, once we get back here to the office, folks, we'll have a live stream of. It will be my show, but also we'll take phone calls. That'll be fun. Yeah. Get some. We'll have a lot there. to say. Wouldn't it be cool if we were like live doing that? And I don't know. They got a, a commitment. That'd be. I, I didn't enjoy that. That'd, that'd be, be kind of, that'd, that'd be, be, that'd be, be fun. That would be Start wild. piecing some staff together. Yeah. Yeah, start some, piecing some like staff that. together. Yeah, and they might have the starting five at the press conference tonight. You never know, dude. Dude, they'd be electric. Starting at point guard. Boys. Yeah, I just want to introduce just you to boogies. a couple of my friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Curse and Scotty would not. Well, they'd have to pull an all-nighter here and just like writing up all the players that are committing and then putting it together and everything too. But I, I will, think we're I think we're prepared for a decent amount of them, yeah. but you never know, man. Yeah. I will um, say I went on a Kentucky sports radio show, not Kentucky sports radio, but uh, a different one out of Lexington, and it was weird. Uh, they were asking me questions just about you know the excitement level, blah, blah, blah. and then they get into the fact of like. At least the, the host said that he's like, the fans, a lot of fans are nervous. And they're like, because if they don't nail the hire or whatever, it was like, but they're nervous about Cal coming in to rub next year and it is exacting some inv- revenge on them. And I was like, I hope that's the case. That would be really yeah, after tonight, we're just counting down the wait. days until the SEC schedule release. Yes, I can't. And also, wait. guys, I think we need to start planning a trip to Lexington yeah. for that. We got it. We yeah. need to go to that. The game. only thing that makes me nervous about it is. Like the schedule format is going to change, adding Texas yeah. and Oklahoma. Yeah. So the the home and home is not a guarantee. Yeah. They, dude, the SEC they and have to. They have they to do have a home to and get home. it they, right. Dude. They know this is ratings. Because how this many of those are you going to have? Like two or three now. Yeah. So like yeah. it's going to be. It has to be on CBS. It. it has to be on CBS. Yeah. It has to be like a one p.m. tip. Oh, Arkansas, like Kentucky's get, always on CBS. But yeah, bare it minimum, seems like yeah, it should be bare minimum. Arkansas has to go to Kentucky. Yeah, like yes. if you're only gonna do oh, it yeah. once. They have to go there. If they, Sorry, it'd be cool to have them at home, but it's got to go. I, I, I think though, because like I said, told everybody before, it's like if you look at their the formula of how it works for television ratings when it comes to the SEC, number one's Kentucky and number two's Arkansas when it comes to eyeballs. It, it's mm-hmm. just that's the way it is. So I, I'm gonna hope we give Greg Sankey the benefit of the doubt and everyone in schedule and be like, hey, they're playing twice. They'd probably let them play three times if they could, like just because it's gonna be that big of a deal. It's a good comment here. I just I just highlighted on the on the stream. We never had to question if Lawson Blake or Kate Arbogast was going to play hard. We should keep one of them. Having someone hungry on the roster can't hurt. But this is also a new era, so what do I know? Uh, <laughs> well, Kate, Kate Arbogast took his ball and went home to the West Coast. So uh, I regret to inform you at least one of those guys will not be here. Yeah, Kate's uh, portaling. Lawson Blake, TBD. Uh, like I, I mentioned yesterday, I think that some of the big men they're looking at are going to have to make sure they can fit with his skill set. But uh, we'll see how it works out. Yeah. I, I I still want to invite to the Halloween party. I want to go to Cal's Halloween party this year. Bunch of people. Halloween, yeah. Halloween, Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> That's good, dude. I'm so excited, dude. I I'm, I'm about to. I'm just excited. I cannot wait to see his smile and face tonight. It's gonna be beautiful. I mm. didn't mean to pull up the what time is the press conference, but it, it's at it's at <clears throat> six. Um, but some people in here asking about like how, like college game day at our first home day. We're gonna have college game day. So many, yeah. That's gonna be <laughs> that's college gonna game day. Came here the last time Cal came to Bud Walton. Arena. Yeah, that that is uh, that's another perk of this. Like there, yeah, that kind of thing is gonna happen way more frequently. I found a clip last night. I started watching Cal Calipari post game press conferences just to get more of a, a feel for him. And I was texting Curtis. He pretty consistent six and a half to eight minutes. Good. There ain't none of this eighteen to twenty two. Hey, we're gonna do a roll call on on whatever. Um, it was the post Auburn win when game day was at Auburn and he was he made this comment it was like it's funny we're 
we're always on game day, but it's never at Rupp. It's always we're always on game day on the road. Um, him coming here gives Arkansas ample opportunities to have game day here, like potentially multiple times a year, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and multiple times on the road because yeah. that's just that's the position that Arkansas finds itself in now. Another great comment here from Dalton. Uh, I know a lot of people are clamoring for it, but Midnight Madness in Fayetteville would be absolutely insane. We've been calling for this for like as long as I've been alive. Like, do some type of Midnight Madness. They do now the at, like at BW Kentucky, Wild. They do, uh, yeah, at Kentucky they do the Big Blue Madness, mm-hmm. and they just have Cal like on the set. It's on. It's like it's on SEC Network. They have Cal on the set while the guys are playing. He's just. Imagine right. about life. While this the is the most realistic and most around. in play of Midnight Madness. I know, look, it doesn't have yeah. to be called Midnight Madness. You can call it whatever the hell you want. Some event like that, it's crazy that they haven't been doing that. Mm-hmm. Especially because, like, Mus is so good at PR and knowing, like, what are cool events and what people like. Like, I'm stunned that it never, they, they only did that one stupid BWA live where me and Curtis went and partied with, with Duke Deuce after. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, we need to have some type of cool, like, event like that. I think that's going to, I mean, especially this year. They might have Bill Clinton in attendance, man. It's going to be crazy. It's yeah. got it, the I don't, I don't know the that palace. the uh, yeah. I don't know that the red white game at Barnhill is going to cut it. No, hell no, it no. ain't going to cut it. I think you're going to have to have the seats, man. No, yeah. no, you're going to have to have it at Bud Walton. You're going to have to have every possible thing you could have happening. Put for it in you. the football stadium. Put a floor down on Do, the you field. May, you may, you may have to. Hogburner says, "How long will the conference at Bud be tonight?" I mean, they're going to do like the. He'll get introduced and everything. He'll get he'll be up there at the podium and give his own little "Hey, I'm here" speech. That'll be from six to about six thirty, and then uh, they'll start clearing out. Bud, we'll go down to the media room for uh, just like a media presser Q and A there. Um, I mean, that won't be longer. It'll be longer than six to eight minutes. It'll probably be yeah. I was gonna know, say dude, there will not but, be any that will be that short. I bet unless something yeah. crazy happens. Yeah, I wonder how many uh, questions like because like, you know national people are gonna be in there too. So it's like I just yeah. wonder. Bob, this will be this will be ask one pass the mic. Yeah, Bob ain't getting multi questions in yeah. this one, so I was like, yeah, Bob's got to make it good. He's got to make it good. He'll make his. I one love question I love Bob, but he better yeah. chill out, bro. He better relax and feel the moment. Like yeah. I, lo- I love Bob, but this is not the time to do the Bob bit. It's yeah. just not. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I hope yeah. he tees off, dude. Yeah. I don't. Gosh. <laughs> I maybe 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 roll. when they come back around, but like dead serious. Yeah, I, I do though. not want yeah. him to try to make this a Bob moment. This is not a good time for that. Like. <laughs> yeah. One and go, and then maybe at the end we'll give you three or four, whatever. Yeah, because I don't know. I, I don't care to ask a question, but if somehow the like microphone yeah. just got thrown to me, I think my simple question would be like, Coach Cal, John Neighbors, United States Sports Studios. Uh, what do you do when it comes to social media? Do you still like know people who like you know of and are aware of people who like tweet about you negative things and like does that something you know about and follow up on? And if so. Uh, I'm sorry. There's still time for you to come up with a little bit of a, a more a cooler question. No, but that would be me in the moment. That would exactly how that would go. Like I, I don't I don't even want that moment. But it would be one of those deals where it's just <laughs> like I forgot my question. I'm a, I might do that tonight. I might just get to ask for the mic and then be like, oh, I forgot my question, and then just hand it off. I might do that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't know. It's it might be pretty intimidating for some people in there. Could be. The, the lights are getting going to be bright tonight at Bud Walton Arena. And they'll be on the You're scared to go to church. Yep. <laughs> Got to be on your A game. Got to be on your A game. So, well. I can't wait to see how, how many national guys, before we like, get done, how many national guys y'all think, like, who are the, the names going to be? Like, Goodman's going to be here? We think Norlander's going to be here? I have no idea. Yeah. I bet you, like, I think I got random. Like, they'll throw in, like, a Pat 40. Like, I feel like Pat 40 would be here. That seems like somebody just randomly would be here. Yeah. Um, Porzello, I bet you, are, is here. I think Jeff Brazello will be here. Uh, by the way, this person wants to ask uh, Celtics for Life wants to know about DVH waving goodbye to Cal. Uh, John, did you? What did you make of DVH's? He was very annoyed that people were asking him about Cal. I, you could tell he was yeah. not pleased to be fielding those questions. Yeah, because it's kind of like uh, I don't know. It's like, he's, he's almost like as soon as it started, he's like, "I'm, no, it's, I'm glad it's over because it's baseball season." Yeah. It's almost like, "Hey, shut up! We got the number one team in the country. I don't care about your coaching." <laughs> to be fair, by the way, he this is on brand. He makes those jokes a lot, like he whether does. it's football, spring game, or like whatever. He's like, "Oh, I know y'all, y'all really want to be." He does that a lot, kind of like a self-deprecating thing. Uh, but I feel like he really was not pleased with the fact that like they're scheduling the game today around this Cal situation, and I don't know. Just, it, I, I'm sure it rubbed him the wrong way, but. The men's basketball account on Twitter posted a video, and it's just Hunter Juracek. He said, getting on the plane, go pick up Coach Cal and his family. Be back soon. 
Come on now. So then they're going to get there way before one thirty, right? Well, if he's just now picking them, if they're just now leaving Fayetteville, I mean, but they're they're not they're not driving. Well, I know that. <laughs> but how far do you think Lexington it's is in a flight? O'clock. Yeah, it's like it's only. I know, but o'clock. I mean, like it's not that long of a. If they're flying private, I bet it's not that long of a flight, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't fly private. I don't know how long it would be. What statement are you trying to make? I'm trying to think of just the timing. How long does it take to get to and back from Lexington? I, I would say it's an hour. Something tells me that there will be something else posted when they take off again. From Lexington. No, yeah, but I was thinking like everyone was saying that like one thirty thing, like it was. I mean, that, it's that, eleven that, o'clock. If they're leaving right now, I feel like they can be there and back in two and a half hours. Like I feel like that's a a good like in case you know maybe delays happen. You know, maybe uh, you know, layovers. You know how those go <laughs> at the airports. <laughs> <A> layover. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Got to get yeah, connection. Yeah, got to get connection flight out of uh, <laughs> Cleveland. Um, but I don't know. Like I mean, it seems like it makes sense to me. But I guess we'll find out about one one thirty. So yeah. Anything else, fellas? Before we uh, wrap up our uh, midday nope. pot at the palace edition of John Calipari being the new head coach of Arkansas officially. I'm good. Looking forward to it. tonight. All right. Yep. Do we, yeah, we'll, we'll, I mean, we got to save the bullets for tonight. That's right. right that's right. And uh, be sure to follow us on United States Sports because we're going to have content throughout the entire day of uh, all things with John Calipari. So uh, be sure to we'll even give you updates on the flights and the planes and yeah. stuff like that. So appreciate all of y'all watching in, listening in. We'll see y'all later this afternoon.